Hello and welcome. This is Columbia Basin Research's fifth video in a multi-part series on using program Basin Tripit. Basin Tripit is a program created by Columbia Basin Research at the University of Washington School of Aquatic and Fishery Sciences with funding provided by the Bonneville Power Administration. Program Basin Tripit's main purpose is to provide cohort-based survival estimates that account for the possibility of an individual fish overwintering for one or more years or migration periods during the downstream migration process. In the first four videos in this series, we demonstrated getting the program running, loading the necessary data files, reviewing the parameters of Basin Tripit's models, running through configuring the program, and going over the results generated by the program. In this fifth video, we will cover several tips that can help you fitting your models in Basin Tripit. Number one, diagnosing which sites to include. Number two, adjusting the settings. And number three, using custom periods. In each case, we will be using the example data sets that are found on our website. Please refer to videos two through four for mimicking the configuration we'll be using in this video. First, let's fire up the program. Now in videos 3 and 4, we used detection sites MWE, MCN, and JDA and estimated cohort survival from release in 2010 to MCN. What happens if we use a different set of detection sites? In particular, if we do not admit TUF. TUF is Tumwater Dam Adult Fish Ladder. Although it targets detection of adults, some juveniles are detected there too. Let's see what happens if we put it back in. Notice that although Basin Tripit attempted to fit all nine models, it was able to successfully fit only four of those models. The fact that so many of the models were unable to be fit suggests that we may have included a detection site that has too few detections for robust model fitting. That would be TUF in this case. But let's look at the results anyway. The model that was selected in this case was MYS8. This model uses capture probabilities that are equated across release sites and years and survival and migration probabilities that are equated across release sites but not across release years. Looking at the Weighted Performance Measures report, we see that there is now an additional performance measure, the downriver survivals below residualization. This performance measure is defined by the probability of survival from the last site for which there is residualization or overwintering to each subsequent downstream site for each primary and auxiliary release. This is available only if there are at least two detection sites downstream of the last residualization site, that is, below the last site where fish were observed overwintering or delaying migration from one period to the next. For the Chihuahua dataset, when TUF is included as a detection site, the last residualization is observed in the reach between release and MWE, so we get estimates of downriver survival below residualization from MWE to MCN, one estimate for each combination of release group and detection year at MWE. Looking back at the cohort survival estimates using the TUF detections, the overall cohort survival estimates to MCN are a little lower than they were when we did not include TUF for both of the 2010 release groups. We also see that the cohort survival estimates to MWE for the primary release are higher when TUF is included, and the standard errors are much higher, so high as to make the cohort survival estimates essentially useless. Looking at the cohort survival estimates to TUF, they are pretty low. This is not a problem, but notice that for the estimates for the auxiliary releases, i.e. the 2011 releases, the standard errors are quite large, around 1. Also, if we look at the capture parameter estimates report, we can see the estimated capture probability for TUF was only about 0.01. This is very low. The low capture probability estimates and the large standard errors on the cohort survival estimates suggest that we really did not have enough tags detected at TUF to use it in fitting the model. If we go back to look at the configuration window, we see that there were never more than 11 tags detected at TUF for any one release group and observations a year, and all the tags detected at TUF appear to have been removed. This is a sign that we should not have included TUF in the model fitting. The large standard errors confirm that, so in this case, it is recommended that we go back to the model fits in in which we had removed TUF. For the next topic, we will be looking at the Basin Tripit settings that the user can modify. Basin Tripit allows the user to modify some settings used in interpreting the data and fitting the model. These settings can be changed under the Edit drop-down menu. Click on Edit and then on Settings. There are three tabs on the Settings dialog box, General, Size Configuration, and Advanced. On the General tab, the user can change the number of decimal places reported for the point estimates and standard errors. The default number of digits is 4. If you change this value, be sure to click on Apply after you've made your changes. On the Advanced tab, the user can tell Basin Tripit to use detections that occurred before the recorded release date and time. This is not generally recommended, but can be useful if the user knows that the release date and time are incorrect for some tags. This can happen if the same date and time is used for release of all tags in a tagging file. However, this option should be used only in special circumstances. On the Sites Configuration tab, the user can specify the Sites Configuration file to use. The Sites Configuration file tells Basin Tripit which sites are release sites, which sites are interrogated 
investigation sites, where they are located in relation to each other, and how to interpret detections on individual antennas within multi-antenna sites such as dams. The default file option is the file that is used in other programs created by Columbia Basin Research, including program PIT Pro and program Roster. This file is created by CBR based on the data in Pitagus. In most cases, it is recommended that the user use the default site's configuration file. However, there may be times when the user needs to use a modified site's configuration file. This can be useful in certain cases, for example, if the user has more precise knowledge of the release location than what Pitagus records. For example, for a release location that is an entire river, such as Chiwar, in our example data set, Pitagus records the release location at the mouth of the river. If the user knows that these particular fish were all released several kilometers upstream, say, then they can modify the site's configuration file to reflect that, and they may be able to take advantage of detections at an in-stream pit tag array near the tributary's mouth, which would otherwise be excluded from analysis. To do this, the user must modify the river kilometer location in the site's configuration file for the release site, save the file under a new name, direct Basin Tripit to use that file under the site's configuration tab, then reload the data and reconfigure the model. This requires several steps. First, open the default site's configuration file. On a machine using Windows 10, you can do this by copying the file pathway of the default site and pasting it into the Windows Explorer address bar. The default file will open automatically. Make sure you change and save the file in a different location under a different name. In this case, perhaps we know that our fish released at Chihuahua were actually 5 kilometers upstream in the Chihuahua River rather than at the mouth. Use the search function in your text editor to search for Chihuahua. Note that the river kilometer for the Chihuahua release site is 754.077. This is the mouth of the Chihuahua River. Change that value to 754.077.005. We'll save this file to our desktop under the file name Sites Configuration New Text. Now return to Basin Tripit and the Sites Configuration tab of the Settings dialog box. Click on the Use Alternate Site Configuration file and click on the buttons with the three dots. If you already have data loaded, you'll be prompted to save your existing project. Let's do that now so that we can easily reload it if we choose to revert to the default Sites Configuration file. Now navigate to your newly modified Sites Configuration file. Click on Open and then click Apply. You will now need to reload your observation data and your age data and reconfigure your cohorts, releases, sites, and periods. In this case, after we select 2010 cohort and the 2010 and 2011 years, we see the interrogation site CHL is now available for all release groups. This is because Basin Tripit is now interpreting the Chiwar release site as being upstream of CHL, based on our modified site's configuration file. Note, however, that the detections are sparse at CHL, especially for fish released at Chiwar in 2010 and detected in 2011, and there are not enough CHL detections in this case to include it in analysis. In reality, we do not know that the Chiwar release site was as far upstream as 5 kilometers for all Chiwar fish in these years. And so it is advised that we use the default site configuration file in this case. We recommend that users use caution when using the option of an alternate site's configuration file. More information can be found on how to modify the site's configuration file at cbr.washington.edu slash analysis slash sites config underscore custom underscore site. Let's reload our data using the default site configuration file for demonstration of other features. We can easily do this by loading the project we previously saved. The last topic we discuss in this video is how to change the migration periods from calendar years to other temporal periods. By default, Basin Tripit uses the calendar years for the periods. The user has the option of changing the periods to more biologically meaningful periods. For example, a 12-month period that starts in the fall or a 3-month period that starts in the spring. To use different periods on the configuration panel, the periods tab active, click on the custom periods button. There are five columns in the custom periods dialog. Number one, a red X to delete a period. Number two, the name of the period, the calendar year by default, but the user can edit this to be any text. Number three, the start date of the period. Number four, the end date of the period. And number five, a blue slash used to divide the current period into two periods. For the Chihuahua River data set, the default periods we have been using are equal to the calendar year. Let's change those periods to two six-month periods per year, January through June and July through December. This will result in four periods. 2010A equals 1-1-2010 to 6-30-2010. 2010B equals 7-1-2010 to 12-31-2010. 2011A, which equals 1-1-2011 to 6-30-2011. And 2011B, which equals 7-1-2011 to 12-31-2011. Now we'll demonstrate how to define these periods. 
Click on the Custom Periods button if you have not done so already. You can resize the Custom Periods dialog box to make it easier to work with. Starting with the first period labeled 2010, click on the blue slash to divide the period in half. Name the first period 2010A and adjust the end date to be 6-30-2010. You can do this by either selecting and editing the date or by clicking on the calendar icon and selecting the date. Note the start date already agrees with our desired start date. Update the name and start date for the second period 2010B starting on 7 one 2010. The end date already agrees with our desired end date. Do the same thing for 2011. Divide in half and update the name, start dates, and end dates. Note that the program will automatically change the ending date of one period or the starting date of the next period to ensure that the two periods do not overlap. Check to make sure that the starting and ending dates are defined as you wish and fix them if necessary. Remove any extraneous periods by clicking on the red X. Once the periods are defined as you like, click Done to exit the dialog and apply the custom periods. Now we have four periods, 2010A, 2010B, 2011A, and 2011B, where A is the first six months of the year and B is the last six months. I can clear the Use Custom Periods checkbox on the top to revert to the default periods and recheck it again to use the previously defined custom periods. Looking at the configuration schematic, it is apparent that no tags were released or detected in the first custom period named 2010A. Also, very few tags were detected in the last custom period named 2011B, and no tags were released during that period. We will need to omit both the first and last periods before fitting the models. To do this, again click on the custom periods button and then remove the first and last periods by clicking on the red X next to those periods and clicking yes, then click done to apply these changes. Now each release group is labeled estimable and we can click on fit all models. In this case, the estimates are nearly identical to what we found when we used default periods because the release and detection times within the default periods mostly agreed with the custom periods we chose. Different custom periods would have resulted in different results. This has been Lesson 5 on using program based in TripBit in which we covered various hints, tips, and special cases for using the program. This was the final video in the series on program base and trip it. If you're using program base and trip it and you have any questions or comments you can fill out our satisfaction survey as mentioned in the YouTube notes. We would greatly appreciate any feedback you have in helping us make future versions of this program to be more helpful to our users. We hope that this video helps you get the most of the program base and trip it. Again if you have any questions or comments in regard to the program please fill out our survey as previously detailed. You can also contact Columbia Basin Research at web at cbr.washington.edu. Best of luck on your survival models and thank you.